All Out 4 gets its fair share of disapproval and it seems like the fan base is divided about where it stands within the franchise. I see many comments saying things like it's just a loot shooter or it's not an RPG and it seems that every fan wants something different from Fallout. Now I do think Fallout 4 has a few missteps but I don't agree that it's a loot shooter or a bad RPG and this leads me to why I feel like Fallout 4 is misunderstood. Now of course everyone is entitled to their own opinions about the game but I want to explain why I think some of these comments don't hold up as well as point out a few missteps. Bethesda were in a really difficult position as sequels have to build upon the foundations that have already been set by their predecessors. We have already seen a shift in the franchise as Fallout 3 is completely different to Fallout 1 and 2. And I'm sure when Fallout 3 released back in 2008, it had its fair share of criticism back then for the changes it made. And Fallout 4 is no different in that regard. It aims to build upon the foundations whilst implementing some new ideas. It's hard for a developer with a core fanbase to make any amendments to a beloved IP. They have the task of making a game that needs to cater to the core fanbase as well as drawing in new players. And if the game deviates too far from its core, it starts to lose its DNA. We have seen this happen already with Ubisoft and how they have handled some of their properties in the last 10 years. Ghost Recon and Assassin's Creed are completely different compared to their earlier counterparts. Judging on that merit, I think Fallout 4 has the right balance of trying to stay close to its DNA whilst implementing new systems. So let's talk about one of these new systems, which is the crafting and junk system. Junk is a set of real world items scattered across the wasteland in various buildings and containers. It can even be looted from corpses and creatures as well as being stolen from the unsuspected. Junk seems to be at the core of the experience, however I do think it's possible to play the game without picking up any junk items at all. Junk is used to craft items as well as mod weapons and armour amongst other things. Mods require different items like adhesive and screws. Every item provides certain materials, like a desk van will provide screws and wonder glue will provide adhesive. Let's be real for a moment, in a post apocalyptic setting, does it make sense to be searching for resources? Of course it does, and what Bethesda did with this system is actually incredible. Depending on how you mod your weapons and armour, they will provide different benefits. Like modding a marksman stock onto a sniper will increase accuracy, recoil and melee damage while using that weapon. The reason why this is such a great system is because it allows you to mod your favourite weapons and armour and use them for however long you see fit. In previous Fallout titles, you tend to discard the previous weapon you've been using once you've acquired a better weapon to use. So when you reach the end game, you more or less have been using the best guns in the game, which you've probably used in previous playthroughs. But with the junk and crafting system, you can mod a pipe pistol and specialise in a certain perk and use that gun for the entire playthrough if you wanted to. This gives the player the freedom to choose from a variety of weapons and armour, as well as being able to roleplay. There are numerous builds that you can search for online with varied skills and perks for different playstyles. I have played as a melee character with chameleon armour and the blitz perk and it's like I'm a ninja. In my current playthrough I want to be a scientist and a robotics expert so I'm currently working on boosting my intelligence. So if this talk about Fallout 4 not being an RPG doesn't hold up. Not only can you upgrade weapons and armour, you can also upgrade your power armour as well as crafting robots. The problem is that Fallout 4 structure pushes the player to engage with some of the best and worst aspects of the game in the first few hours. And this is Bethesda's biggest mistake. Bethesda showed their hand way too early. Two of the game's most iconic features are demonstrated in the first hour of the game as well as the new settlement system. The first iconic feature is the power armour. Being able to actually get into the mechanical structure and feel like a walking tank is the best version of the power armour in any Fallout game. The issue is you're given this armour early without doing anything meaningful. Getting your first power armour should be a crucial and memorable experience after spending hours of travelling and fighting in the wasteland. Not only that, the world seems to be littered with power armour. 
Within 20 minutes, I found two different power armors in the single playthrough. It should be way harder to find or access by having some sort of difficult creature near it in the wasteland. This could all be put together with some neat environmental storytelling to explain why it's there in the first place. And this brings me to the other feature that was revealed way too early. The Deathclaw. The animations for this creature are absolutely incredible. The way it moves to dodge while it's getting extremely close. The Deathclaw is probably the most iconic creature in the wasteland as it's supposed to be a myth. Not many people have seen it and lived to tell the tale. Yet the protagonist woke up from that icy grave and gets to fight one in the first hour of being in the wasteland. And when this happens, what is there really to fear in comparison to the Deathclaw? I'd much rather come up against the Swan or the Behemoth as I know its location and I have time to prepare and plan my attack. Whereas the Deathclaw can spawn randomly around the wasteland, how terrifying is it when you're just going about your day and a Deathclaw comes out of nowhere to wreck your shit? Deathclaws have given me some of the most memorable moments in playthroughs across the series. And the last addition that was revealed way too early is the settlement system. This is because you are guided towards the Minutemen and their questline early on. I do think the settlement system is a fantastic addition. At the end of the day, everyone still needs a place to call home, right? And if you're not into it, you don't have to engage with it for the most part. There is a part in the story where you do have to use it to advance. Now the settlement system should have been introduced between the middle to late game as a feature. Because it's demonstrated so early on in the game, it gives off the impression that it's an integral part of the experience, when effectively it's there for the people who just want to help rebuild society and unite the wasteland, as well as the other people who just want to be creative. But when you put all these systems and new features together, I have no doubt that this game was designed with survival mode in mind. Now, I'm not saying that anybody should play in one particular way of course, play however you want to on any difficulty, but I think Fallout 4 is at its best when you play on survival mode as it adds so much more to the gameplay. You have to eat, drink and sleep as well as try not to contract any illnesses. Damage has been increased for yourself and enemies, and there is a significant reduction to carry weight as well as ammo having a weight now. There is an additional perk in survival mode, which is the adrenaline perk and it adds a real risk reward element to the game. The more you kill, the more damage you'll do, but eventually you need to sleep. Sleeping is the only way to recover from fatigue and save your game unless you've got a new Coca cola so, you have to think about whether it's worth sleeping and saving your game or keeping your damage boost. Because if you die, you will spawn at your last save point. You really have to prepare before you go to wander around the wasteland on survival mode. So is Fallout 4 a competent RPG? Yes, but it is flawed, like most games are. The limited dialogue and voice protagonists as well as the main plot soured the experience for many of us, but there are some really neat additions which expand and improve on what its predecessors had already built. Fallout 4 shines brightest when you ignore the main plot to explore, engage in its systems you want to, or when you play the game on survival mode. What do you think? Do you think Fallout 4 gets an unfair amount of criticism? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching as we discuss all things Fallout today. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe. You can follow me on my Instagram or Twitter where my handle is JammerTheGamer, but for now, peace.